All right, it's another episode of the Cedric Maxwell Podcast. I am Joseph Pavone alongside Cedric Maxwell. The Boston Celtics, Milwaukee Bucks, all tied up in their best of seven series. Eastern Conference semifinal series. And Max, I know you're pumped up because that game one outing between the Celtics and Bucks, man, it had a lot of Celtics fans wondering if, if this is a team, if they finally met their match within the Celtics, to use their words, right, they punch right back. They took a punch in the mouth and punch right back. I, I swear, he must, have, he must have said it like 75 times because he had every single player saying the exact same phrase. But I guess that's the best way to put it, man. 109 to 86, blowout win, wire to wire. There's something's dominated in this one, especially in the first half defensively. Jalen Brown scored 17 points in the first quarter, finished with 30. Jason Tatum, he only had 10 at halftime. He finished with 29. Master performances from those two. But here we go, guys. Here we go, Max. I said, guys, here we go, Celtics fans, right? The series shifts over mm-hmm. to Milwaukee. How will the Bucks punch back? Max, what are you thinking? Well, I think the Bucks have a, a combination of things they're going to try to do. Uh, I think they'll try to slow the Celtics down a little bit. Uh, uh, maybe get um, – I think you try to get Giannis scoring early. And I think that one of the things that's really helped the Celtics in this series so far is the fact that the Celtics have been able to uh, get pretty much with Giannis in a one-on-one position. Uh, Grant Williams has done an excellent job. Oh, staying, man. He did him on the what box. A game. I know one-on-one situation with Giannis. Giannis. Giannis isn't going through him. He's using a lot of time on the clock. He is not as effective. Now, what they want to do is to get – maybe Giannis on a running start, a uh, running start where he can use that length and that size to go by Grant. But if he gets in the paint and just tries to bounce and go through Grant, Grant is strong enough in his upper body where he's able to keep Giannis from getting towards the rim or falling away. Your your best bet with Giannis is to make him become a jump shooter. Uh, right. And the more they start to really focus on Giannis, the less effective they are because they have to get other people involved. Uh, the only right. person you looked involved in that game the other day was Drew Holiday. Drew Holiday was um, was really good, uh, taking the ball towards the basket, didn't shoot it as well as I thought he would. Uh, they kept Grayson Allen out the game. Uh, for the most part, everybody else was in check and I think this is the big this is gonna be a big game because this is the Middleton factor we talked about. If Middleton isn't there and I don't think he'll be there for maybe not even this series, they're gonna to have to have another piece able to step up and knock down shots. And so far yeah. I have not seen it from Milwaukee. Well in game one it was Drew Holiday for sure. Actually if you ask me, I feel like he was the MVP of that game. You know, mm-hmm. if we're being if we're being realistic in, in the sense of how he affected both ends of the floor. He was just a constant pest, you know, for the Celtics. And I think game one, to your point, yeah, he did a cool off a bit. But the thing about Giannis is he may not have to, you know, shoot 50% from the floor just to find that rhythm. And when he does find that rhythm, he gets other guys involved, which is why we saw that triple-double that he put together in the first quarter. But, you know, like like you mentioned, Max, I don't think I've ever seen Giannis this uncomfortable on the floor, right? I mean, they're throwing guys at him, but it's not it's not just – it's not the way they defended Kevin Durant, right? It's straight up on an island, whether it was Grant Williams at times, whether it's Al Horford at times. And these guys, are they're holding their own. Man, I, I thought Grant Williams, that was an amazing performance for him. It was a career high, 21 points. But talk about showing up when your team really needs you. Talk about showing up on the defensive end of the floor when, you're, when your defensive general wasn't there. Marcus Smart sat out. The defensive player of the year wasn't available in game two, and it seemed like the Celtics defense didn't even miss him. That was incredible. Well, I think it was that, and it was also Jalen Brown getting off to a sensational start. Uh, right. When Jalen was able to get cooking like that early in the basketball game, Celtics Ooh. did not go away from him. They never, they yeah. really ventured away, and, and I think you look at Grant knocked down threes. Can the Celtics continue to shoot threes at that pace? I don't think so. But they have good shooters out, and Grant Williams has proved that he's a a legitimate commodity. Uh, I talked to Grant's dad. I've talked to Grant before. I said, "Man, don't you play your ass out of here?" And what I mean by that <laughs> is that the Celtics can they afford if somebody one of these big teams come out and say, "Grant, you know, you're a free agent. Uh, you know, we right. we'd like to have you." I think he could help any team. But here in Boston, I think the culture of the team, the the, the chemistry of the team. And the people he's around, I think Grant would love to stay here. But uh, 
at the end of the day, it might be all them dead presidents which are thrown his way. Can the Celtics match or, or whatever it is? Because right now they can come in and give him, a, give him an extension. Uh, and would he be able to take, would he want to take that kind of extension? And would the Celtics be able to um, afford that extension? Because now you're probably going to look at a real hard cap if you came out and gave him Robert Williams type numbers. Right, right. And right now he's on the, he's on the, the grand stage right now everybody's watching you know this matchup between the Celtics and Bucks he's obviously uh showing up here with this big performance those six three-pointers though like that's going to resonate with other teams looking at him the way he's guarding Giannis that's going to resonate as well that, that right. is that that's really it it's not yeah the that's the part that stands out three, most right three yeah pointers, three points are one thing but his overall play defensively passing the basketball, making intelligent plays. Really, yeah. Wiley Portis really was taken out of this game. He really was yeah. he was no yeah. in this game. I don't even think you really noticed him. He got a couple of shots to go down. But for the most part, the Celtics were really good. And, uh, you know, if they shoot that well, I mean, the Bucks are going to have a hard time containing them because yeah. they don't have the firepower without Middleton. Middleton is that, uh, you know, you have Batman and you have Robin, well, well, Batman's is there, but you don't have that Robin. Drew Holiday can be that way from time to time, but they've always right. really been affected by Chris Middleton, his absence of what he can do or what he can't do. Well, I'm glad you brought up the question of, if, is this sustainable, right, for the Celtics? And we're going to play a little game in a second, right? I didn't even tell you about this before we started recording, Max. We got, we got a little yeah. game to do. It's called, it's called The Truth or Fool's Gold. And we'll get to it in a second, but I just want to point out this, this one unique stat that you just, you just don't see every day, right? Game one, right? The Celtics shot, they they they, they took a lot more three pointers than two pointers, right? They, they, they went eighteen, they went eighteen for fifty from from behind the arc, and they went uh, ten for thirty four from inside the arc, right? That's that's twenty nine percent for you for your math, you know, for people trying to do the math right now. So it wasn't a great showing, and it wasn't a losing effort. However, in game two, the Celtics made twenty three pointers, twenty out of forty three. And they still managed to score less two pointers in the in, in the in the winning game, which is where they win eighteen of forty seven from inside the arc, forty nine percent. Max, what do you make of that? Is that something you've seen before in the sense of like seeing a team do that? And, and mind you, on the other end, uh, the Milwaukee Bucks they made three three pointers. You know, well, like should, that differential should, doesn't happen. Yeah. No, the differential doesn't happen. Where you think the Bucks are going to only make three, but I think it also tells you the changing of the game. Uh, you know, I've always told you the story about, uh, you know, 1980, 81, my first NBA championship run, Boston versus Houston. In that game, I think there were six three-pointers taken for the entire mm. game, attempted that's for the insane. entire game. And that that's that really shows you how the game has really changed and, and is going in a whole nother direction. Um, I don't worry about that. The two points is as much right now. And another reason I don't worry about them because they have not really put Robert Williams involved in this game. And he's a guy who's going to get you those two pointers because of those lobs going towards the rim. Uh, Jalen went to a little bit of his mid range game and Tatum from time to time will drive toward the basket, but you don't have other guys out there who are doing that. You don't have, um, you're not looking at Grant. Grant was a three knockdown threes. He didn't get a lot of twos. Uh, you know what Pritchard's going to give you. You know, to me, the Celtics have another gear because you start looking at, man, White cannot be this bad again. This is beginning. I, mean, this is <laughs> I was waiting for you to bring game. him up. I knew you were going to bring this him up. This is the second game that essentially he has not even been effective. I mean, but yeah. you look at him defensively, he's not done a bad job. And his passing, uh, getting it to other people. But they eventually need him, Derek, Eric White, to not start knocking down some shots because he has uh, yeah. had some wild looks and it's just not been effective. Yeah, we saw him practice in the floater. And, and you know, the, the, this is the practice before game two. We saw him practicing that extensively and trying to find ways to get to, to score around the basket, which don't necessarily turn into layups, right? Because that's how stifling this defense has been for Milwaukee. So I understand it's been tough for him, but yeah, I'm with you, Max. I'm waiting for him to turn this thing around, waiting for him to put together that game where you're like, okay, this is the reason why this stuff is – I mean, look, the main reason why this stuff has got it wasn't for scoring. Like, I get that. Before people start, you know, flipping out and, and saying that, that, that's not what he does. I get that. But we don't have Milton out there. When, when you're coming in that – you're coming in the game with that second unit, 
and, and the ball's in your hands. You know, you, you have to, you have to, I want to see White apply pressure to Milwaukee's defense, apply pressure to that second unit because they need that. So just need you to constantly do that and never give up. Like giving up like, like six attempts. I don't think that's going to cut it. It just, well, I, I just he, think he, he needs to find a spot. Yeah, He's got to find a yeah, spot. Yeah. I think that's the, the point is six attempts, uh, not right. looking at the basket, the, the pump fake. I don't know why if I'm a Milwaukee Buck, why am I trying to run him off the three point line? I'm encouraging right. him to take that yeah. three right now because he doesn't have confidence. Now, if he ever gets going, maybe things can help. But uh, I thought you'd look at also Pritchard and yet another gear that the Celtics haven't used in the last game is you look, Daniel Tice didn't even play in the game. Yeah. And when you don't have Daniel Tice, that's why I think he may have a few more cars in his deck to play that, you know, Milwaukee hasn't even thought about yet because of the way the game has, has gone. So I, I, I like the Celtic chances. Obviously, the third game is going to be huge in Milwaukee. Uh, will they start calling the game differently? Will they, uh, will they try to let Giannis run a little bit more? Or because I'm telling you, he's banging and bumping into people. I think Van Gundy said it on a couple of uh, uh, times when he looked at Giannis driving in with the hammer. With the he said, "That's a charge. That's a charge." Yeah. The yeah. Charge. So, so it it might work out evenly, and uh, he may needs to maybe work the officials a little bit more about uh, Giannis getting up with the elbow. I mean, he hit Grant in the mouth with one. Uh, he's also, Rob Williams got, he just said, kicked in the nuts one time. So Giannis, <laughs> yeah, has, uh, Giannis, Giannis has done a little bit of basketball slash Kung Fu going with some of these plays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that foot, is, that foot is flying in the air or whatnot, man. It's like, look out, look out. When he's coming through the lane, he's mm-hmm. doing all the wobbling and this, the one leg's going that way, the other one's going, yeah, people, there's, there's, there's casualties out there. Mm-hmm. But the Southern's are keeping that toughness though. You know, I, I, I think, that's one thing that everyone was wanting to see happen. But what's going to happen when they face adversity in the postseason? And this is the first time, right? They, they went 4-0 in the, in the first round, and they, they haven't really dropped a significant game in, in quite some time. And this is the way they responded. I think it's a, it's a sign. It's a great sign of, of what's to come for this team. Well, you still think about – I think people thought that the Brooklyn series was so dominant. And I think the way they, you know, uh, shut down Kevin Durant. Uh, but you still think about it. That series, if you total up the numbers, I think the Celtics won the four games by 18, 20 points, something like that. So right. it, wasn't a, it, it wasn't like a blowout, but I think it just felt dominant because they didn't let – Kyrie had his the first game. He went off. But after that, they kept Kevin Durant in check. And yeah. I kept all the uh, pundits kept saying – Kevin Durant's going to take this thing over. Stephen A. Smith, body. He's getting body tonight. And I'm telling you right now. Well, he never got 40 in the right. series. 39 the last game. And that was really just off one leg or whatever shots he was shooting at the end. But it was a dominant performance. So, yes, you, you the Celtics came in here. And, you know, you know Boston, the Boston fan base, man, they just about jumped off uh, Sacred Bridge over there. Uh, you know, guys like Michael Felber, like, oh, I told you, I told you they, they, were, they, they can't do this. <laughs> you tonight. can't stop and, Giannis. Yeah, 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 and then they get right back on the bandwagon. I mean, this is a, a, a fair weather city. They're, I think they're more, more excited. The media here is more excited when their teams lose. You look at what's going on right now with the Red Sox. Oh, man, hot news. They're not winning. You look at what they're saying right now about the Bruins. Oh, my God, it's horrible. Look at what's going on right now with the Patriots. Uh, you know, the takes that Bill Belichick doesn't know what he's doing right now. But that that kind of news here in Boston, in sports radio, uh, really sells and, and really generates. It, not the fact that Eme should be maybe coach of the year or the way this team mm. has turned around and it's been playing so well. Yeah. No, that's, that's, a, that's a great point, Max. That's, you, put that, you put that nicely. I mean, yeah, I, I just think – it's that shadow of a doubt, right? As soon as that happens, it's like, oh, well, see, this team isn't that good. We knew it. We should have known better. It was just like, well, wait a minute. You know, they, they were feeling themselves. They, they swept the nets. I, I, don't, I honestly think that at some point in that series, they knew it was going to happen. But I, I don't think it was – I think it was surprising for these guys. You know, they're like, man, we are this good. But then it was also a confidence booster. So, yeah, I think that's the part that everyone's sort of sleeping on. But, yeah, I'm with you, Max. I mean, that game one, yeah, a lot of people were jumping off the – the the hype the hype train for sure 
But let's let's do this. Let's play this. Uh, let's play this game. Okay. The truth or fool's gold. All right. It's pretty self-explanatory, but you know, I'll, I'll put it out there in layman's terms. Uh, I'm gonna say a, a fact about the series, and you're gonna tell me if that's something that we can uh, that we think will carry on or carry over into uh, into Milwaukee's game three and four. Or is it fool's gold? This is just something that just happened yes. that that one night. All right. All right. Here we go. Gotcha. The Celtics held the Celtics held Giannis Antetokounmpo to a combined thirty eight point four percent percentage from the floor in game in the combined game one and game two. Is that truth or fool's gold? Will that carry on? I think it's fool's gold that you think you're going to have him at that percentage because he's he's shot so shot so well in so many different arenas uh, over the the time when you see him in the playoffs, there are a couple of series where we went about 55%. So no, I don't think that carries over. Uh, okay. I think what you just have to do is contain him. Make sure he don't get a, as, as Giannis would like to say, that he doesn't get a fitted piece on you with, you know, with, <laughs> with 10 biscuits over there. I, I, I think as you keep Giannis <laughs> in the point where he can shoot 30, he can get you 35 points, but you don't let him do all those other things, I think you'll be okay. Yeah, I'm with you, Max. I think we're gonna we're gonna get the Giannis game in, in either three or four, one of these. The question is, can the Celtics survive that? I think that's that's the big question here. Uh, going going over toward, towards Milwaukee. I mean, yeah, there's gonna be one of those games where he's gonna dominate. He's gonna he's gonna score close to the fifty percent or well over forty percent. So I think that number is really really tough, but I don't think it's too far off. Maybe you can hold him to anywhere you know a little over forty percent or so. I think if you're the Celtics, you've done your job. If you, if you pull well, if you if you let Giannis get the fifty percent, and you keep uh, everybody at bay, everybody else at bay, you're you're still okay. Giannis, okay, Giannis yeah. isn't going to kill you from the three point line, and the game has really been dictated a lot by not letting those other guys knock down shots. The Connaughton's of the world, if they're knocking down shots, or if you don't have Grayson Allen coming in fouling people and him getting knocking down shots. That's going to be the difference in the way this series is played. If Giannis gets a bunch of twos, you know, gets 36 points with a bunch of twos, I think you can still live with that if you sub it defensively. Definitely. No question. All right. This one is uh this one I think I know what your answer is gonna be, but I put it in here anyways because it was worth it was worth stating. Uh the Celtics draining 23 pointers. They drained 20 in game two, uh, which is 10 more than we saw them make in, in uh game one. Uh, what are the chances that carries over that type of shooting? Uh, is that truth or is that mm-hmm. fool's goal? I think that's fool's goal. I don't think you look at the team shooting that way. Um, Grant knocking out threes the way he was able to do it. Now, he's been effective. Think about it. Grant, has shot, Grant has shot over over 40% from the three-point line. So that is yep. a fool's goal. But I think the totality of this team shooting that way I don't think that happens. So that would be fool's go. All right. Well, you mentioned Grant. He's actually in our next one. Uh, game two, Grant. Now, I'm not going to focus on the 21 points here. Career mm-hmm. high 21 points. Let's focus on the. Uh, let's focus on uh, the way he limited Giannis on defense. I'm saying limited. I'm not going to go out and say <laughs> shut down like we've been hearing this week. Uh, Grant continuing to limit Giannis, make him uncomfortable for the rest of this series. Is that the truth, or is that fool's goal? It depends on how the game is being called. And, and and if the game is being called for not a superstar, Grant can stay on the island by himself and not allow Giannis to go through his body. That's going to be the big thing. So yeah. I think that travels. I don't think that's fool's goal. I think if he's on the island by himself and Giannis starts dribbling the ball one, two, and you know trying to bang his way in against – uh, against any time but Mr. Grant, I think that travels. So I, I'm not looking at that. That's, that's true. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you, Max. I, I'm, I'm going to say that's that's the truth. That, that's Paul Pierce. Now, I just don't want people to be like, oh, man, he's stacking up all these fouls. Like, you know, to your point, depending on how they call this thing, uh, we're going to – I'm going with, in with the assumption that it'll it'll be clean, you know, defense from, from Grant because he just looks so comfortable out there, you know, especially when he's on the island and when he's got him in ISO and he's, he's you know, the way he moves his feet. Man, when he's – but how many times have we seen Grant steal the ball from, from the top of the key, top of the mm-hmm. perimeter? Right? We didn't see that at all. We didn't see that at all throughout his career until this season, right? When he came into training camp, slimmer, you know, he looked more in shape, more fitted, and the quickness was there from from the, from the jump, from the very beginning of the season, for sure. So, well, Grant, Grant, the thing Grant is, he's very smart, and he moves his feet well, and he knows right. his guy. He, he anticipates things that Giannis wants to do. 
And then talking to him on the radio after the game, he talked about reading his scouting report, knowing what his tendencies are. He knew the same thing about Durant. I'm going to try to push him left, get over on his hand, knock the basketball away. With Giannis, mm-hmm. the same thing. If you can keep him out the lane and you get Giannis to, with the fallaway jump shot, you live with that. You've done your job. And that's what he looks at it. And I think he does a lot of that because he, he sits down with Ime and he sits down with the coaching staff. And he also has, he knows the guys who are behind him. And you think about Horford was on the island several times. Yeah. With Giannis. I think that you look at those same, those same guys, they've all got something in common. That's the fact that they're intellectually strong, smart basketball players, and they're doing it in a team concept. And on top of that, there's there's a stopper behind it. He knows if he's there that Rob Williams is coming at the end of those plays and he's trying to swat and get in Giannis's right. face. So if you don't let Giannis get all the way to the front of the ramp, then you've done your job defensively. Yeah, no question. You know, Ime, after game two, called him, uh, and I thought this was very appropriate, called him Baby Al. I'm like, yes, yeah, that's it. And I, and I think the IQ goes with it, Max. You know, it's not just the, yeah, he can make threes, and yeah, he's, you know, he can bang down low as well, but he can also, you know, he can anticipate things. He can read defenses. That's huge. Well, and he hasn't done this individually. It's like everybody said, this is a one-off. He hasn't. He did it with yeah. Grant. He did it with, remember what the job that he did against Nikola Jokic out there in Denver, where he started that's to call right, him yeah. that, he started calling him Batman. Yeah, that's, that was, that's what started. That's because, what started the whole yeah, thing. Because he was so good defensively. And I think yeah. he has a tendency to do that. And because he, again, smart player, the way he plays defense is like nobody else I've seen. Even Marcus, he leans into you with his upper body. And he has so much weight, you know, bearing on you that guys don't get around you. If you're trying to bang with him, you have to be slippery with him. If I was playing with him, I would go into the body, but I'd try to slip by him. You're not mm-hmm. going to go through the body. You know who was really good like that for the Celtics? It, uh, it was Aaron Baines. Aaron Baines was very much, he was really good like that with Joel B. Joel B would try to go through the body, and Aaron Baines would just go straight up, and you can't go through those guys who are built like brick walls. Right. Well, you have to also be able to absorb that contact, which I think he's yeah. done a tremendous job. Same thing without, same thing without, yeah. without following, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. You know that you mentioned Daniel Tice, man. I, I just listen, it's not a knock on Tice, but I just feel like Grant forced Emay's hand. It's just like the way he was playing so like over the top. Al was clicking, Rob was in the mix, even though Rob only played, I want to say like 16, 17 minutes, but like, you know, I just feel like he didn't want to. He didn't want to shake things up. So I, we still what may see you, again. What did, what did you bring Daniel Titus here for? Insurance policy, just yeah. in case something went bad. If something right. starts going bad, Daniel Titus is a guy that comes in. If if right. you think about, it, if you get three fouls on on um, anybody out there, any of your big bigs out there, if you get on Williams, Grant, or if you get it, uh, you know, Rob out there, you can Rob. always bring him in the bench bring him off to the bench and play. You also can, he can also come in and spot L and he would give you a little bit more distance as a three point shooter. If you had Rob and if you had him in there, uh, maybe with Al and you had Tyson yeah. because both guys now are able to knock down the three pointers instead of having Williams in there defensively. So I, I like what you're able to do. And again, insurance policy. That's all that is. Absolutely. All right, Max. And lastly, we have, uh, and this is from Ime Udoka after practice on Thursday. He was being, he was joking around a bit because Marcus was in the back, but in the middle of one of his. Uh, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ime joking? That's like a, that's a whole nother thing that you, what? Yeah, but it's, 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 it's dark. It's dark. Yeah, I mean, like, like, <laughs> as you would say, as you would say right now, you make got jokes. Is, is that what you're saying? <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I'm going to go with jokes. this. Okay. Let, let me see what, how this reaches out. Okay. <laughs> So he's talking about the Southern Sixers defense and people asking questions about Marcus's availability and, you know, how is that going to carry over? And you know what he says? He goes, we don't need Marcus, he said, after <laughs> practice. And that then he smiles. Is, uh, okay, that is fool's gold. <laughs> I give you that all day. <laughs> and then right uh-huh. before he can continue, even with the mask on, you can tell he's smiling. And he just goes, Marcus is in the back right now. He's laughing. I know you heard that. He goes, <laughs> so he goes, but no, in all seriousness, like the defense is there. The identity is there. The, uh, I call it the muscle memory takes over, right? 
because these guys have been uh, conditions, you know, to, to play off of the, the, the natural instincts that the defense just has already, you know, and I think that's a good, that's what we saw in, in, in game two. But my, my question is that defensive intensity. Now I did come up with this question well, hours before the news dropped that Marcus Smart is listed as probable. So the good chance that he's going to play, but um, you know, can the Celtics team in hypothetically, if there was no Marcus in one of these games, can this carry over? Can the Celtics put together another win in this series without Marcus? Is that the truth or is that fool's goal? No, I think that's true. I think they can because if they can be consistent on their defensive end, I think Marcus adds another level at the initial point of attack. I, I like that. Right. But in the short term, short term now, the Celtics could get away with a couple of more games without Marcus. But in the long term, I think they have to have Marcus back in this series at the initial point of attack, defensively and offensively, if they're going to win this series. Yeah, no question. And I, I'm not going to lie. I, I, I well, I, I'm going to say I'd be lying if I told if I if I told people that going into this game, I was like, oh, something's got this no no problem. This one's going to be a blowout, guys. Like I wasn't ruling them out altogether, but we spoke right. We spoke for like an hour before tip off, and we were both like. Damn, no Marcus, huh? Like it was, it was, it's a, it was a blow. Like you know, it's a, it was a blow to to the 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 vibe in the building, right? Everyone waiting to see how the Celtics going to punch back, and you find out, oh man, Marcus is not going to play. But as soon as this game starts, it's it was all Jalen, seven points in a row from the Celtics. Jalen was in the mix, seventeen to finish the quarter. You know, twenty two at halftime, and, and it just completely changed your opinion. And honestly, I don't think I've seen the Celtics defense play that that well for one first half. Than, they, than what we saw. And without Marcus, that speaks volumes for where this team is at defensively. Yeah, they, they did. They did exactly what they wanted to do. And as you said, when you got, um, I think the biggest thing, when you got Brown going the way Brown was able to go, uh, knocking down shots, defending the basketball at the high level, understanding that Grayson Allen is not in his wheelhouse, that, look, mm -hmm. I'm going to take the dude anytime I want to. That was the difference in the basketball game, the attitude, as you said. And I wasn't even around for the first game, but but thinking about the first game of Jalen Brown throwing the basketball away, but he had seven turnovers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Really not, really not involved in the game. I think that was a big, big point of emphasis. And you still look at this. Here's the, the thing you look at. Milwaukee Bucks have only scored 101 points. And then they came back with this, this team is held below its average because the defense has been so good. Does this defense, here's a fool's goal. Does this defense right now travel from Boston after two mm. games and continue to play the same way they have defensively? And we talked about it. And I think it's all about if the officials let them play, you know, sometimes in, in, right. a, in a, somebody else's home, you'll get a tendency that you'll get a bunch of calls going the other way for the Bucks, And will the fans be outraged or, or, or the tape or viewing the tape? That's going to be the key. Well, I'm going to put my, not that I'm a betting man, but I'm going to put my money that you'll see that same defensive intensity. My only question is what's going to happen when those shots aren't falling on the other end? Because that's what the Bucks do. They capitalize on those. They start coming back at you downhill. They go on these runs. And Giannis's foot, uh, fingerprints are, are all over it, right? And, and can the Celtics survive that? You know, 23 pointers to, to them scoring three. I mean, that was the gap that they needed to catapult them. But again, the defense is there. You're, 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 the stops are going to be there. But the stops were creating those extra offensive opportunities that we just didn't see in game one. You know, they just weren't able to do that. So. We, 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 we're, everybody's still missing the point. It's the Middleton factor. You know, yeah. if Middleton is not knocking down shots, and more than likely, he won't be back from the strain ACL. Who is the guy who's going to step up for the Bucks and start knocking down shots? That's going to be the key to what, what how this game is going to be played. And, and, and eventually, I think, what, who's going to win this series? Somebody else has to step up for the Bucks, And if they don't do it, uh, I think, again, we talked about it. Celtics in five, Celtics in six. It could very well happen. Oh, man. That would be impressive. It really would. Marcus Smart, like we said, uh, is listed is probable for game three at Milwaukee. Uh, he was ruled out game two with the right knee contusion. Uh, it says he's feeling a lot better. And uh, the Celtics took a gamble and it was it was worth it. Listen, Max, this is the biggest stretch of, of off days you're going to have throughout this series. 
It's every two days after this. So if Mark is going to get his break in, this was the time to get it in. And if this team, if this uh, series is going to go the distance or go to six or seven games, you're going to need Marcus in there. You're going to need him in the mix. So I, I, I think it was a, it was a gamble that paid off, and I, I think the other they, they made the right decision. You are you are correct in that in the fact that you have if you just sell it to who you think they are and who they believe they are, then they feel they could have won a game without Marcus in the short term mm-hmm. and give Marcus an opportunity to rest and not try to test it anymore do any damage at all. You can get five days off, essentially, from the time he was injured. Sunday, that was it last Sunday? Yeah, last Sunday to... Last Sunday, a, yeah. A Saturday, you're talking about six days of getting treatment, being off of it, getting rest, Rehab, getting treatment, yeah. off of it, and, and getting that thing back right. So I, I'm not worried right now about Marcus Smart coming back. All right, what's your prediction? What happens in game three and four? Game three and four. Damn, you you asking a lot. Well, the betting line I heard was yeah, yeah, man. What you Bucks got for me? Minus, Bucks minus three. You tell me, what's this series gonna look like when you when you're pulling up at TD Garden? What's the what's the, what's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? I think I think it's definitely gonna be it is a good possibility of it being two two. Uh, that's what that's what I'm Celtics, thinking. They're gonna split. They're gonna Celtics split need to yeah. Celtics have to win one game in Milwaukee. Uh, if they win the second game in Milwaukee, if they win That's the first game thinking. in Milwaukee, oh my God, then you put tremendous pressure on the defending yeah. champions to do something really different. And they haven't shown the ability so far in two games really to do anything different. This has been, you know, if you think about how they played in the first game, it was more about the Celtics missing shots. Then they yeah. really make these shots. But see, Mac, that's what I'm saying, Mac. That's what I'm saying. Like those shots, those 23 pointers. That's that's fool's goal, man. That's that's lucky. That's the leprechaun, man. That's you know yeah. what I mean. So yeah. I don't I don't know if if the Celtics don't, which I don't think they will. If they're not shooting to that to that volume to that extent. I think it's going to be a much closer game. And it's going to be more of a more of a, a bar fight, if yeah. you know, as KG would call it. It'll be a bar well, fight. As you're talking about the Celtics, if you can limit the Bucks right now, where they've had one on one. And then they had eight. It's eighty nine in the last game. If you can eighty nine, Bucks to eighty nine, ninety five points. Then your right. job is done. The Celtics' offense is good enough where they should be able to score at least one hundred and ten points a game. And that's even without you know just being an average team knocking out trades. But I, I like the Celtics' opportunities. I like the Celtics' chances. All right. Well, there you have it. Matinee Saturday. I hope we got you guys all pumped up, ready to go for this matchup between the Celtics and the Bucks. I'm sure we'll do another episode when this series switches back to Boston. Uh, we'll and, touch base uh, yeah. before game five. One thing we can promise you, you know, we, as you, me and Joe Sway, you know we're going to keep it on the... What's that? We're going to keep it on the what? The honey, The hundred, man. <laughs> we always going to keep those honey. And, and I, That's and what I we do here. You, and I guarantee you the next time we see you, uh, you know... Both of us gonna. I'm gonna be shaved, and Joe Sway gonna have some of his hair off his head. So we'll be we'll be a little <laughs> different in the fact that I'll see my barber tomorrow early, and Joe Sway will probably see his barber. You know, I don't think Joe Sway gonna see his barber till he gets back. But by the time yeah, we do another podcast, back. we'll we'll probably be a little bit more clean faced. But subscribe yeah. to us on all the all the uh, channels uh, because uh, we have great content. Uh, we want to uh, make sure we give you, uh, uh, you know, a live feed of whatever's going on. And, and uh, you know, we, we're, we're looking at this and not like Celtic eyes, but we're looking at basketball people who know the game and trying to tell you what's happening. If the Celtics were playing sucky or playing like shit, we tell you that. If they were playing the opposite and playing well, then we'll tell you that. That's what we do here. I like the fact you mentioned that. You know, it's playoff time, so we, gotta, we keep it clean over here. I'm, a, I'm hitting up my boy. I'm hitting up Luis every other week. And my barber, Luis, hooking me up, making me look nice out here. But yeah, Max, you said it, man. That's what we do here. We'll check you guys out next week. Until then, Max, what you got? Anything else? No, keep it on up. On it, on it. <laughs> we'll see y'all next week.